this is the first of a series of videos I'm making about how to start a fruit orchard and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, my own fruit orchard this land that you see here this allotment plot uh, I got it about uh, uh, 18 months ago 18 months ago less than 20 months less than two years and it was flat nothing was here uh, I built a polytunnel and I started to plant uh, trees then building uh, fences around it just for and uh, protection um, as a fruit cage then I put a netting bird netting over it just to stop the birds from eating the produce that we have fruits we have here then after a while I saw that okay this is actually a good enclosure so besides growing fruit I can actually let my chickens come in for that I have to actually fox proof it so I did a little bit gradually here and there and now it is in the second year of it you see the fruit orchard in the day of the 6th of the November 2015 this is that it is I have about 120 fruit trees and fruit bushes here and lots of uh, I've not counted the numbers of the blackberries and the uh, raspberries that I have, just uh, normal things that I, uh, <laughs> those are those are things that I had it before this. So how, how to start a fruit orchard? First of all, uh, you have to be interested in fruits. If you're not interested in fruits, you may just end up uh, doing things that you don't like actually, you're not going to eat them. So the best thing is that go after what you like. And uh, the best way for that is just to We'll go to a supermarket or a farmer's market somewhere that you know or apples day if you have apple days or open days in the nurseries usually around the October time so you can go there and just uh, taste the different fruits and just see what you like or go to a supermarket sometimes supermarkets especially supermarkets like Aldi or Lidl and uh, Morrison's they bring homegrown produce like uh, British apples and uh, British pears and uh, locally produced uh, uh, plums and damsons and uh, different varieties of exotic fruits that you can also plant in the UK or in the polytunnel if you, if you have a polytunnel. So the best way is to first choose what you like. Then after that think about uh, how much you want to spend. If you just want one, uh, to have one or two trees, okay, uh, I recommend because you will end up with one or two trees that you don't have any other things except those two, three, four, whatever number you are choosing. It's better to make your choice really carefully. Don't go for something from a supermarket, this or that supermarket, that you may not know actually what are they, uh, the end result. It's better to go to repute, re reputable nurseries somewhere that you know. I recommend uh, Keeper's Nursery for apples, pears, cherries, and uh, all kind of plums, and uh, uh, also medlars. Uh, and also if you want, for example, uh, white currant and currants, generally red currant, white currant, this is a good source. Um, if you want uh, your, uh, your trees, uh, uh, be a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more expensive uh, or you want to definitely in first year they give you something. You can go for Blackmore Nursery. Uh, Blackmore Nursery is a good, I found that both of them are good. Keeper's Nursery is now proving in the second year to me that the choices I made from the Keeper's Nursery are actually better. This tree you see, Topaz Apple, is better. It's from the Keeper's Nursery and I found it really better. Now it's 6th of November and I have yet fruit on this. And uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so I, if it was me, because the tree, when you plant it, that's it, it is there, it will be there for 20 years, as long as it is, it has a life, it will be there. You will get a stock with it, so make a good choice. For that, you have to think about what kind of, uh, at what time of the year you want to have that fruit. You can have fruits which are coming early or middle of the season, early means July and August and uh, those times. Uh, mid means September and early October and late means October onward November and December up to up to whatever time so uh, so best thing is actually to uh, go to the websites of these nurseries 
read a lot. I recommend read a lot. If you are not sure, if you have not a chance to taste anything, read a lot about them. Peeping, uh, Orange Peeping, uh, there is a website called Orange Peeping. They have a lot of tasting videos, tasting uh, information. I have myself also in my videos. Uh, when I eat something, I just usually go and make a tasting video about it. You can refer to them. I, I try to be uh, 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 impartial when I'm describing the taste. If it is a... Uh, um, not tasteful I would just tell it and if it is uh, tasteful I also tell it so the information is reliable on my own uh, I try to actually in my own YouTube channel try to actually to produce a kind of encyclopedic uh, visual guide for tasting of fruits and other things so you can use my own videos or go to the Keeper's Nursery Keeper's Nursery catalog is the most extensive catalog of any uh, any nursery I've ever seen they have the largest number of the apples and the pears and plums that I've ever seen uh, in this country, except some research centers that, uh, of course, they don't. Uh, their, their catalog is not available, so you cannot really go through them. Other choice is just to go and buy a few books to start to read, or see somebody who has already has one and just uh, uh, talk to them. Usually, people try to. Uh, yeah, not underrate what they have, the choice they have made. So, just uh, try to try to really eliminate those kind of biases in their thing. If you, if you, f for example, find them that uh, they bought something from a supermarket and they're saying that really is nice or so, but they don't know much about other different varieties of fruit, the same fruit, for example, apple. That means probably they didn't have a choice. Actually, they don't know much about the other varieties that exist that can enjoy. So, so the, the first step is to choose your tree where to buy it. In the next video, I will say that uh, how to choose the different varieties. Um, how to start a fruit uh, orchard. And uh, now we are talking about uh, what kind of fruits you can grow in the Britain. I live in the southern parts of the uh, Britain, southern part of the Britain, so British Isle. And uh, so uh, what I'm saying is generally true for this area that we are living in south. Uh, for the northern parts, Midland, Wales and uh, Scotland uh, and north of England, uh, it just the dates slightly vary, two or three weeks. The amount of the heat that they have is a slightly less than us, the daylight and everything. So, uh, just adapt it. But there are there are fruit trees that are adapted for the, what we can grow here, and they can grow better there. And uh, mostly because of the damp and the lowest level of the uh, sunlight. So, what I'm talking about now is the varieties of fruit. Fruits you can grow, the most uh, widely spread is the apple. There are thousands probably of apple trees that you can grow and I'm not exaggerating, thousands. In the UK, at least, I can tell you that uh, in a place like a Keeper's Nursery, you will be hu seeing hundreds of varieties of apples. And you can order them, uh, you can buy them. They're very good, uh, different taste. Don't try to go just for one variety of apple. If you have uh, the choice for up to three or five apple trees, go for one early season, one mid season, one late season. These are the things you can find in the website of the Keeper's Nursery. It's easy to find it. They can use their catalog to learn about them. And uh, then uh, choose the one that you like. It's best to go for Apple Day or try when you see the fruits available in the supermarket, local fruits. Look at the name of the apples and the varieties just to learn how it is. Uh, another variety of the fruit you can grow are uh, plums and damsons. Uh, of course, this is a Marjorie seedling plum. Is in his uh, first year as I planted it. It's now more than uh, yeah, two and a half meter tall. There are so many varieties of the uh, plums and damsons in this country. So it's a very good uh, fruit. You will really enjoy it. Again, you will have early, late, and uh, um, um, early, mid, and late season uh, fruits. Another variety of the fruits you can grow are cherries. Cherries actually were very common in the past, before 1950s in the UK. And it is now sad that uh, we have lost many of the orchards to commercial growing of other produce. Uh, 
of wheat mostly, probably, or land for building on them, towns and uh, structures, anyway. Uh, easy to grow. Uh, this is a Merton Glory cherry, very, this is resistant, very good tree. It gave me fruit in the first year. I bought it from Keeper's Nursery again. So you can grow cherries easily in Britain. Uh, another variety of fruit you can grow is uh, peach. Uh, I recommend that if you want to grow anything outdoors for peach, go for the peach curl, peach leaf curl resistant variety. This is a uh, Avalon Pride and is relatively very good resistant, has shows very good resistance to peach leaf curl. I had it it's in the first year, it gave me about five or six fruits, large, juicy fruits. The leaves, a few of them suffered from it, but just removed them and then the tree is all right. And it had put a good growth. I was really hopeless that it may not grow well, but it did well. And uh, yeah. Another variety of the tree, you can grow a fruit tree, another fruit variety is the pears. Of course, this was a Concord pear. You can go for many different kind of pears. Santa is a good late pear. I saw it in the Keeper's Nursery. Uh, open day in the, I think, 4th of October this year it was, 2015 it was. And uh, what you can choose as much as you like. Concord is, I found it is very trouble free, it gives you fruit, abundance, abundant fruit. It's a hybrid between the um, conference and commis. Commis is a tasteful, conference is a prolific uh, pair. Both of them, the qualities are inherited into the uh, Concord. Another variety of the fruit we can grow in Britain easily is a medlar. Medlar, this is a Iranian medlar. You can grow Nottingham medlar, uh, or kind of Netherlands med medlars also. Iranian medlar is good, uh, is good because it or ripens on the tree, unlike the uh, Nottingham, it will not just split. Uh, and uh, yes. okay, uh, now I'm uh, going back to the subject of uh, how to start a fruit orchard. And I told that what kind of varieties of fruit you can grow. Of course, soft fruits you can consider all the time. This is a tayberry. Tayberry is actually not the tastiest of the berries, but uh, it's nice to have it as an as addition to the palate. Uh, blackberries are very good. You can have a good crop of them. Cherries, sour cherries. Uh, uh, you can have uh, fig, which uh, I have on that other part. I will go and show it to you now. Okay, uh, another kind of fruit that you can grow in Britain and will give you a good crop is, uh, is figs. Uh, figs are very profit, prolific, you have to contain those roots, so if you not give uh, just leaves to you because uh, it likes to do photosynthesis, you have to encourage it to actually feel that it is actually in, uh, dying in a way. That's the way the trees will spread their DNA in the form of fruits. That is what we want, fruits. So by adding potassium, or potassium deficiency actually, causes this fruit giving dying near death experience for the tree. The same will happen when you uh, yeah, uh, secure the root in a kind of uh, pot or something like a slab. Slab in the ground is better because you will have water available uh, directly. Uh, another fruit that you can grow in Britain easily uh, is the at least in the southern Britain, or if you are in northern parts in, the, in a warm or sheltered greenhouse or conservatory, is uh, kiwi fruit. I planted this kiwi fruit uh, in this year, 2015. It gave several beautiful um, flowers. Uh, it was first year, I didn't expect it much, the flowers didn't materialize to fruit, so we will see how it will do this year. And uh, other varieties of the fruit you can grow, and I recommend it really well because of the as you see, we have a police chase in the air, so unfortunately, <laughs> they are making noise. Okay, uh, what you can uh, grow in Britain very well nowadays because of the global warming is great. If somebody says global warming is not true, it is a lie. It's true, we can grow grapes now in Britain. Of course, there are varieties, usually from Germany, that they can grow here without much problem. They are adapted to the wet and damp climate. Now you see our...
So I highly recommend growing grapes. They are very productive. They give you good variety. I, I will mention the names of the variety in due course, so don't worry about that. Uh, another kind of fruit you may grow, as I mentioned, are quinces. Quinces, there are many varieties of quinces available. Um, about 10 of them I know. This is a, this is an Iranian quince called uh, Esfahan. Esfahan is a, is a very uh, pro beautiful and uh, aromatic and sweet actually. You can, you can eat it raw even without cooking. And there are other varieties that you can just go to the Keeper's Nursery website or any book that you have, just look at it. Books about fruit oil. There are a few good ones. I, will, I have made some videos about them. You can refer to that, those videos. As I mentioned, people know cherries by the sweet cherries, but the sour cherry is actually more prolific and trouble free. This is a sour cherry in its uh, second year. It gave a few fruits uh, last year and it is now growing well. It's about it from Asta, so I didn't expect that much. But look at the healthy, healthy growth we have put in one, two years. And I can say that is a good one. The tree is almost one inch thick now. It has typical cherry uh, satin uh, skin, satin texture skin, beautiful chestnut color, uh, bark, I mean, skin of the bark. This is a good tree you can grow, and I recommend it. Of course, if you have a warmer shelter, you can shelter the area, you can grow apricot, you can grow uh, nectarine. I've not tried it. I've planted apricot. Apricot uh, was doing well anyway. Uh, I will talk about it later, how it is doing. You need a better sheltered position for that than what I have available at the moment. And this is another variety of the sweet cherry, of course. Between all your other fruit trees, you can grow soft fruits, lots of um, blueberries, uh, uh, tayberry, as I mentioned, you can grow lots of raspberry. This is one of my several of the sites of that I have raspberry available. Even now it is a November 16 and I have raspberry yet on this. Um, yummy. And yours is giving flower at this time. This is another of the blackberries, fixed in November 2015, is getting flower. Very, very prolific. I like this. I will, I will try to grow more of this variety next year. Look at the flowers it has. And it is now November 16th. It's Monday. And of course, soft fruits are always available. You can grow with lots of strawberry between these trees are planted. So that's another option you have. I'm sure the moment I stop uh, making this video, this helicopter will also disappear. Funny. Okay, um, if now we have chosen the trees that we want, the kind of fruits that we want. Um, then, the next stage is where to plant it. You can use it in a combination with the vegetables and fruits. If you have a smaller space, the tree goes vertical, the, fruit, uh, the vegetables will go horizontal. You can do that, like the way I did for the strawberry beds there. The trees are there. And... Uh, strawberries are taking the space between them. That's the way of doing it, using the maximum space. You can build a patio between them, just somewhere that you can stand without getting muddy in the winter or rainy days. And uh, yeah, this is the way you do it. But the most important thing after that is to find the proper space. Proper spacing depends on the root stock you are choosing. Root stock. What's the root stock? Rootstock is the root that will provide the food for the tree. So up to here, that can be an unproductive tree on its own, probably, most probably. But it has good root system. Uh, in a way, if it is dwarfing, semi-dwarfing, uh, uh, vigorous or semi-vigorous, that determines how much the roots will spread in the soil 
how long for how far and uh, how much food will be available to the graft graft is the productive part of the tree from a known parentage that will give you exactly what you want the fruit that you want with the qualities that you are you have in your mind so uh, the root stock as i told for this space that i have used here mostly are dwarfing and semi-dwarfing so uh, if i talk about the apples that is m27 rootstock that I've chosen here. This will grow nothing more than the one and a half meter to 1.8 meters. So practically you will have a limited amount of the space taken by this but that means also your fruit will be limited. Uh, if you go for the dwarfing rootstock which is M27 for the apples, this means uh, in, in this case I have given this space for about uh, one point uh, 60 centimeter between each tree that is the amount of the space I've given my neighbors have given similar or less I don't recommend less because that means practically you will not be able to move between the trees but if you have that amount that's the minimum I recommend then if you have more than one row of the trees and if you of course some of you are talking about the apples now then you will give the next row more space by working in a zigzag pattern from that tree to that tree one and a half meter uh, 1.60 so the next tree are planted in the line which is between them so that tree is there that tree is there in the line between them okay there is a line i join them together there in the middle of that line, 1.80 centimeter, I came back and planted this tree. This is, of course, a um, um, peach tree, Avalon Pride. And then I start a row again here, 1.60 centimeter. The next tree, which is this uh, uh, Iranian medlar. Then the next Iranian medlar goes there. Then the next tree, which is a pear. In the Queen's Sea rootstock, which is again semi-dwarfing or dwarfing rootstock uh, of Concord pear, will be here, 1.60 centimeter. The next 1.60 is this taken by this Marjorie seedling uh, plum. So, the next row, again joining the line between this and that tree, in the middle of it, 80 centimeter, extending 180 centimeter. I come to this point, 180 centimeters, about six feet. So I come to this point, that's the place that I planted this topaz apple. And again, another tree there, that's a cherry, 1.60 centimeter. In this direction, another cherry, 1.60 centimeter. And then going on. The distances are like that, in a zigzag pattern. So practically, I have maximized this space between this tree and this tree by avoiding to plant them in a straight row, in a straight line. This is one row, the next row is not exactly opposite each other, as you see here. One is there, next is there. The next tree on this row is not opposite this, is not opposite that one, is somewhere in the middle. So that increases the maximum space between this tree and that tree. That maybe is about, yeah, it's a Pythagoras theorem, you can just calculate it. It's more than two meters of space between these two in this way. And uh, that's, that's the trick you do in a limited space to have your trees planted. Of course, uh, next time I will talk about the root stock because this was for M27 and uh, dwarfing root stocks or semi dwarfing root stocks. I did, I did have just this space. If you have more space or if you want a bigger tree, that means you will go for a, a different root stock. We will talk about that later in the next episode. Beautiful day. Sun is rising. Slightly hiding behind the clouds, but hopefully they will vanish. This side of the sky is blue. And uh, heralding the coming of a new day. This is the uh, second of the December 2015, and yet Topaz apple is going. I'll make a separate video about that. Okay, uh, 
there are a few ter terms that you have to know when you are uh, uh, trying to buy trees. Most of us buy our own trees. Some of us will uh, buy root stock and graft on it. Uh, but this is about those people who actually buy the tree. So when you buy the tree, there are a few terms. One of the ma terms that you will encounter when you're ordering your tree is uh, maiden. Uh, maiden means a tree which is one year old since it has been grafted. So the root stock may be one year old, then the graft also one year old, so that is two year old tree, but we call it maiden. Maiden means the tree has just been grafted one year and it's in the second year is where you plant it. Uh, then after that, there was uh, after maiden you say two year old tree means the tree has grown bigger and larger. Uh, to a substantial size, about one meter or more, and uh, three years old and others, uh, as you know. Uh, another term you may encounter is a tree which is a bare root. Bare root trees are trees that uh, have been pulled out of the soil, and uh, what happens is that they don't have any root ball with soil attached to it. The root ball or the roots of the tree as they are have not much soil with them. That is bare root. The root is bare, naked. There is no soil around it. Uh, opposite to bare root is a tree that is in a pot. So you receive it, you can receive it at any time of the year, you can plant it at any time of the year. But bare root usually only can be received in autumn or winter and planted to grow in the spring. So after May or April, there is no point in buying bare root trees because they will hardly take, they will hardly be able to uh, establish themselves. After that, in the, in the spring and summer, you buy trees which are in pots. Okay, when you buy a tree, you might also encounter the term uh, rootstock and uh, gra graft. So, root stock is actually what is providing the food for the tree. In this case, up to here is root stock. It may not give any food on its own, but it is able to provide the food, uh, food and the water for the plant. And based on the vigorous vigor of the or energy or the root size uh, of the root stock, you can actually determine the top part, which is the graft from a noun fruit tree you planted. You graft it on that, attach it to that, clone it. Uh, the clone you attach to the root stock will grow based on what the root can provide. So the root stock will determine how big your tree will be. So uh, the dwarfing root stock we have, we have also bigger uh, semi-dwarfing root stocks, and uh, uh, then uh, vigorous and semi-vigorous and vigorous root stock. Uh, the difference is that dwarfing and semi-dwarfing rootstocks, you should not let weeds grow around them. Of course, these were not weeds, they were uh, flowers. Now I have to pull them out. But generally with the dwarfing and semi-dwarfing, because the root is very weaker, it's not extensive, you, you could eliminate the competition for the nutrients, for the food and the for, for the water. But with the semi-vigorous and vigorous root stocks, you actually don't have that problem. You can have grass around them. Uh, so uh, they can take care of themselves because they have extensive, more extensive uh, root system under the soil to take the food and water from a bigger area. So they can go with some competition around it in the form of other plants. This is a pack of trees that I received from the Black Corners. I'm going now to unbox it. As you see, it is very stormy today. I'll just open them, then I will continue to video. Outside is really stormy, but I'm now in the old chicken coop, so hopefully I will be safe here.
you can hear the sound of the storm let me check the trees it seems there are four trees here this is a plum victoria the plum that they gave me is a replacement for the tree that died last year the second tree is pear beth is early pear uh, and I hoped that I have I will have some pears in the August with this pear Beth I will have it hopefully the other tree is a plum Seneca I bought it because it's a it's a hardy and it is tasty and probably large plum if I remember correctly and the other tree is a bowling golden gauge they gave me by mistake another tree, so they have to send me a replacement. Unfortunately, the replacement in the, is not in the um, <coughs> original Ruchus circle, which I ordered, was Pixie, I think. They have to give me St. Julia. But anyway, that's all right, as far as it grows and survives. So these are the trees I've received, and uh, I will check the condition of the tree inside by opening this bag okay and that's the roots of the trees it's relatively dry it has been a while that I, that you had the time actually to come and do this properly but I'm going now to heal it meaning putting it in the ground you have chosen your trees the varieties the root stock and now you have received your tree what you want to do is uh, to plant it best time of course you will receive your trees in the winter and that's the time you can buy the tree as maiden maiden means it is a maiden bare root it means it's first year bare root means there is no soil around the root or is there a minimal amount of soil uh, these are not maiden they are more than one year maiden means one year tree one year means one year after graft and now I've received it I don't have the time if I have the time I will just plant it now so I will go to for a video of planting but at the moment I don't have the time so what I will do I should not let the tree go dry I should not let it uh, stay for a long time without water the tree is actually the dormant but it should not go dry so what I will do I will dig a hole deep enough this is about 30 centimeter deep and uh, I put the trees with the roots. Nothing I will do. I will just put the trees with the roots, even clumped together like that with a tie break. And I just put it inside. So what will happen is that I will put it as a care of the soil. The rain and everything will keep them moist until I have the time to come and plant them. I can leave it until the spring even if I want. Hopefully I will not uh, do it, but that's the way is it, it is. Now, the trees are out. I put them, I take them out. As you see, this is the roots of the trees. They're clumped together, four trees all. And I put them in this hole. What I will do now, I will hold them like that, then Get sure that all the roots are in within that hole. Then I put the soil back. And uh, with my heel of shoe, I press the soil. Not very firmly, just to keep the trees from falling. Um, okay, now I put the trees in, inside the hole. And I just gently press with my boot to make sure that there is no not much air pocket inside so um, they usually say do it uh, at an angle for the variety reason one of them is wind maybe topple them but here as you see I have a windbreak and it's disturbing as you see the tree can stay here it's near the fence anyway so the tree is safe the only thing is that i will just add a little bit water right now right now just to make the soil a little bit moist 
and then what will happen is that uh, the tree will take care of itself until I have the time to come and do it and this is one of the <laughs> Jerusalem artichokes I dug it now this is the Jerusalem artichoke stem and one of the uh, rhizomes or roots are out um, I have to harvest it later I will wait in the 2016 probably harvest it yeah now the tree are in the ground and this process is called healing healing h-e-e-l i-n-g healing that's probably from the heel of the shoe yeah, that you put them inside the soil like that so hopefully the trees will be safe until i have the time to plant them most of the trees here you see have been healed uh, before the final planting so that's the process I have done a lot. Got a good result from that. Before. So hopefully this time I will also get that. Okay, um, now you have uh, went and ordered your trees. Hopefully from a reputable nursery. This one is from the keeper's nursery. As they arrive, they are wrapped and packed with the straw around them to keep it moist and warm and free from frost and wrapped also in another layer of the plastic so this must be around seven or eight trees that I've ordered and uh, by now uh, is winter January or something around today is the January of 9 9th of January 2016 so practically is the right time to plant a tree from now up to the March or April depending on the temperatures you can plant your trees you receive it in such a condition uh, protected from the frost and everything and uh, you then go to plant it Okay, uh, when you receive your trees, you may not have much time to plant them. You can heal them, as I told in the previous videos. Uh, but when you have the time, just go and plant them. For that, first you have to dig a hole. So you, you dig your holes. Uh, this is the typical hole you can dig. You can make it a little bigger. You can fork around it just with the fork to loosen the soil, loosen up the soil. And then uh, you can add manure, make it a little bit deeper to add some manure here, some food for the tree. Some say don't add any manure because that makes the roots of the tree lazy. They will not search for the nutrients going deeper in the ground. Uh, but I add manure because I know under this is a, is a terrace sediments, river terrace sediments, and a kind of very rough uh, glacial till. So uh, after just half, uh, one, one foot. Uh, so that's a kind of like a hard pan as if uh, I have several soil prof profile of these allotments that we are so it, it is useful in this such a condition to add some manure uh, and also if you want you can have uh, this kind of root grow uh, uh, kind of fungi it's a white substance white powdery substance you can buy it in the Wilkinson or any good uh, garden center or when you order your tree you just order that also from the same if they provide it uh, then you you scatter all that around your root but the general outlay is like that that you just dig a hole one foot or a little bit bigger than that one foot deep also that will be enough you put the roots inside that hole and uh, after that, you just wait for the next video. Okay, you have bought your tree. You, have, you didn't have the time. You healed in the trees. It means clump them together, just planting them in the soil to keep moisture available to the roots. And But now the trees are awakening, so I have to go and plant them. So I'm doing with this first one, Goja South Plum, uh, from the Keeper's Nursery. And uh, it's, it's now in flower, so it's the time actually to plant this. And I'm going to do it. Um, Gorgeous Alps plum is a plum from Iran. It's very early. It comes in the late May or early June to, uh, to fruition. It's a kind of green, uh, sour, fruity, sweet kind of plum. 
you eat it because it's the earliest and uh, it's different to other plums because it's not very sweet. You eat it because it's very early and it's the only fruit available at that time. So I'm going now to remove it from the hill, hilled in soil and just go and plant it. Okay, now I have dug the hole, uh, about uh, one and a half foot across uh, in diameter and about one foot deep. This is the Goji Saps plum from the Keeper's Nursery that I'm going to plant. It's the earliest plum that you can have and you see it's somehow coming into leaf and uh, here you see some leaf and it's coming also to blossom. So it's a time to actually plant it. This is now 21st of the February and I didn't have the time. So uh, I removed it from the hill and now I have dug a permanent hole for it, permanent place. Uh, this will be its uh, stake, so I have chosen a piece of wood strong enough to hold it. I have of course here surrounded by the fence and the polytunnel which is behind here and the netting so uh, hopefully we will not have very very strong winds blowing through it because of course it is in the shade of the wind by the wind breaks that I have planted, uh, implemented here. So. That's the tree. I'm going also to add some of this uh, um, root grow. I bought it from the, uh, I think, uh, Wilkinson, yeah. Root grow micro, mycorrhizal fungi. Mycorrhizal, mycorrhizal fungi. That uh, helps the roots to grow and uh, yeah, extend. I'm not putting any manure this year. This place had manure last year. It was actually another plum here, which was a uh, plus from Asta, uh, opal, and unfortunately it didn't grow. Opal or uh, another variety, anyway, I've forgotten the name. I have to look in my notes. Unfortunately, the second year it had a disease, it never gave any fruit. So uh, I just uprooted it and uh, I'm going to plant this good self plum in, in place of it. It is already having some, uh, <coughs> some manure. So some root grow, and then I will go for the next. As you see, I'm going now first to put the stake in. Okay, I put the stake in. Now I will put some uh, fungi, microzeal, microzeal, microzeal uh, fungi here, just to help the roots grow. Okay, this is the microzeal fungi. Uh, it's kind of like a lime. I add it here to the roots in the root ball where the root will grow. This has a very good root system, this tree. All the trees I bought from the keeper's nursery will grow like this. I'm giving it a good dash of this to help the roots really establish themselves. Now I'm going to position my tree, which I think, yeah, here is all right. Like this. And now I start to put the soil around it. It's almost near vertical, that's all right. Let me turn it just this branch, be free. Uh -huh. <coughs> Yeah, that's the ideal position. And now I'm going, that's why, by the way, uh, my asparagus bed. I'm now going to add the soil. Okay, now the tree is planted. And as you see, cherry plum goji saps. It means a small plum. And the goji saps means a green plum in Persian. So that's a plum which comes earliest of the plums late May and uh, early June. It's green when it is uh, unripe. You eat it when it is unripe. If you leave it on the tree, it goes uh, kind of greenish yellow, watery and not very sweet or tasty. Just you eat it when it is green and a little bit sour, fruity taste. 
And this is kind of delicacy, I'm, I'm telling you, you have to try it. Of course, if you just like sweet things, you may not like it, but it's a quiet taste. You can, you can try it. You can have it with a different kind of, you know, pesto, uh, mint or basil pesto, means uh, ground, fresh mint or basil mixed with a little bit of salt sea salt if you like and just like that and then you add it you dip it you dip the gorgeous uh, cherry plum into it slightly lifting a little bit of it and just eat it like that and it's very healthy that's the earliest thing you can have the earliest plum you can have and you see it is now 21st of the february and it's given uh, some beautiful uh, <coughs> blossoms and some of the leaves are coming uh, on the facebook the uh, I saw that uh, they're saying that uh, you have to plant this, so I did it immediately. So that's the way that I, you plant a tree. So you have a starter to create your orchard in this way. This is the time for it. And the distance between this tree and the next one is about 1.8 meters. It's about 6 foot. And uh, from this row to the next row is 1.6, that is less than uh, uh, 6 foot, 5 foot, uh, 20 centimeter. Uh, yeah, 10, 5 foot, 10 centimeter, 5 foot and uh, uh, 4 inch, about. And uh, so they have enough space. Of course, I've planted them in a, um, like a zigzag pattern. So this one is a little bit offset, this one is offset, the next one which is that apple tree is offset, that Jupiter apple. And then comes to this uh, cherry, which is also again offset. This one was a Stella that had a canker, and I, I as you see, I remade it with a, with a little bit of that um, Bayern um, tree, tree paste or whatever you call it. Uh, just use it when you cut something. It is against the fungus, fungus. And uh, now this tree, Bismillah In the name of God, <coughs> I hope this tree will grow, give us good fruit, we enjoy it, and uh, yeah, we contribute something to the society. If you, anyone wants, we can give. Thank you.
ایرانیان مدلار این دوم از گیل ایرانی یا کنوس Strawberry grape, a new variety that I'm trying this year. Pear variety Concord. This is the second year and it is given fruit. Last year it gave eight beautiful, delicious, sweet, aromatic fruits. This year it seems it's going to break. It's the only part. This is the plum variety blue tint. In a way it's similar to the Victoria plum. And it's very vigorous. I bought this tree from the Blackmore Nursery. It's a second year. Has some reasonable amount of fruits. As you can see. I'm looking forward. Last year I did a summer pruning and the result of it is these fruits and the branches now. I will do another summer pruning probably in just two weeks, three weeks time. This is Discovery. The apple variety called Discovery. It gives the one of the best early fruits apples that I can recommend. Last year, this one didn't give me any fruit, but the other one gave four fruits. Delicious, beautiful skin, beautiful taste, juicy, and uh, with a tinge of a strawberry taste. Chemistry of the plants are similar, so no surprise, some of them remind us in fragrance and taste another variety of the plants. This is my favorite yellow red cherry. It's called Mertong Glory. It's named after a, a horticultural station of the Royal Horticultural Society. Merton was one of the directors, I think. Anyway, the size of the cherries. Today we had a hailstorm. This is the ice falling from the sky. And the bird net <laughs> took most of the <laughs> pressure from that. We didn't have much damage to the leaf. Even the leaves, I can say, are not damaged at all. That bird net is freaking good. I like what I have done. Look at this size of the cherries. It's the uh, 19th of the May and look at the size of the cherry. They're really swollen. They're real grown large. And these are the woods that are new now. Next year these ones will give me also some fruit. So I'm really happy it's pushing out the cherry. Really delighted with this Merton Glory. I've ordered another wood similar to this. You will see how it will do. This is a plum. The name of the variety is Opal. Again, similar to Victoria plum, which is a famous plum in the England, in the United Kingdom. And as you can see, is already swollen. They are growing big. No damage to the leaf because of the hailstone. And I can say that opal 
about two to three weeks ripens earlier than the Victoria. My Victoria at the moment is very small, my Victoria uh, plum. So I'm looking forward to have some of this. I planted more than 120 fruit trees and fruit bushes in this allotment over the past 15 months. The result of this is the orchard that you see with the polytunnel, which was built on the same year. And uh, this is a mini tour of our allotment. This is apple variety called um, Winter King or Winston. It's very aromatic blossom. One of the most aromatic, beside the discovery, this is one of the most aromatic. Probably even more aromatic than the Winston, than the Discovery. The smell of it is lovely. And I'm really happy with this tree now. Look, it has given some leaves. I was worried that they're not growing. Even some growth of the branches here. It is going to do well. I may have even some apples. It's a late apple, so it will, it will be ready in late October, November. And it, it keeps up to the next year, 2016. Hopefully we will have some of these fruits this year. If you don't have any, not a big deal. Next year yet, we can have. A little damage to the aphid, due to the aphids here. Okay. But, uh, just superficial. If I try to open it, probably I can. I will do it when my uh, camera is off. The sun is now setting. I was working to preparing another bed. 